Well, we are able to export our excess wind at times onto the grid. We have renewable energy credits so that if we don't need all of our wind, we can sell them on the, on the market as well. So we are quite diverse in, in our energy, um, even though we are quite reliant still on, on fossil fuels. But we've made a lot of changes in terms of our, our commitment to clean energy and moving away from fossil fuel on Prince Edward Island. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. This week we take you to the Cradle of Confederation. That's right, beautiful Prince Edward Island. It turns out that in addition to potatoes, fish and tourism, PEI is the very best at using wind power in North America. Well, PEI actually is one of the leaders in wind uh, on, in the world uh, and the largest in North America. Uh, that is 25% uh, of our electricity is, is produced by wind on Prince Edward Island. We have a total actually uh, 200 megawatts of wind that are produced on Prince Edward Island. Some of it is shipped off uh, to other areas of, uh, of the Maritimes and, and into Maine as well. That's right. Prince Edward Island has 200 megawatts of wind power capacity, which makes it the province with the highest penetration of wind power in North America. How did that come to be? Well, it has a lot to do with how PEI was getting the rest of its electricity. We get 25%, uh, as I said, of our, of our electricity from wind. The other 75% is from New Brunswick Power as a partner with our, uh, our electric utility here. About 75% of PEI's electricity comes from a pair of undersea cables from New Brunswick. Back in 2000, the majority of electricity produced on the island came from 200 megawatts of diesel and fuel oil powered generators. For financial and sustainability reasons, they look to renewable wind power to replace as much diesel power as possible. PEI has uh, reduced its emissions in the last uh, 15 years by 19 percent and, and if you look at Atlantic Canada nationally, uh, 26 percent reduction compared to 4 percent nationally is, is a big reduction in uh, greenhouse emissions. So. So we are moving towards that as well. PEI reduced its emissions and quickly learned that it could produce wind power for much less than the market rate of 13 cents per kilowatt hour. It was all part of their energy strategy developed in 2008 that sought energy security, new economic opportunities and environmental sustainability. The plan certainly paid off. Today, the province is making money off their cheap wind power production. On Prince Edward Island, it, it costs us five cents per kilowatt hour to reduce it, but we sell it off for eight cents per kilowatt hour. So it is, it is a revenue generator for, for our energy corporation. Uh, so we take in about $20 million a year of revenue on our wind generation. This year, Prince Edward Island could get 30% of its electricity from wind power, the highest percentage in North America. And PEI is currently working on an update to their energy strategy, which is due for release this summer. The other area we're looking at is, you know, solar power, more biomass. So integrating those whole things in together is what our energy strategy will show in the end. And we're working with low income islanders as well for weatherization programs, uh, more energy audits on homes. So that's all part of our new um, uh, development of programs through our Office of Energy Efficiency. So what would Minister Paula Bigger like to see come out of the province's new energy strategy? I think our end game is if we can get the capacity to store that wind, I think you would see at least 50%. And, and I think that's our ultimate goal is how can we capitalize the most on our wind capacity here on Prince Edward Island? Because that is our greatest resource in terms of potential for electricity. PI is spending $140 million to install two new power cables to to New Brunswick to bring the capacity to 360 megawatts. The province delayed a decision to build a new diesel plant on the island while they explore new ways of generating more renewable energy such as solar and biomass. Scott Harper of the PEI-based Wind Energy Institute of Canada says increasing the integration of renewable energy is being examined. 
whereas wind sometimes is generating in the uh, overnight hours when the demand may not be there, well, you know, solar is not going to be. But where solar is likely to be generating are at those peak times uh, of the day when the sun's still out and energy use is high. Solar may complement wind power nicely. The Wind Energy Institute has helped PEI develop the highest levels of wind energy integration in North America. In addition to solar and biomass, PEI is looking at a range of solutions including smart grids and energy storage to increase on-island production of renewable energy. Check out our blog, podcast and photos at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. Saskatchewan is not the leader in wind power today, but the Prairie Province wants to get 50% of their electricity from wind power by 2030. Take a trip with us to more Saskatchewan to see why Saskatchewan could rival PEI with its wind resource.